What's up everybody, it's your boy Wes Grant, you're watching Sub Urban Nerd, this is the channel where I get my nerd reviews on today's nerd news, and boy do we have so much news today, we got like 10 topics, and I'm gonna try and squeeze it down into one giant show rolled up in a perfect little bow, anyways, so I'm gonna just give a run, quick rundown, I'm gonna be talking about the PS5 faceplates, Call of Duty uh, banned a bunch of people, Xbox is it better, especially going with uh, Gabe Newell, uh, Battletoads, Hawkeye, Avengers, Jill Valentine, Splinter Cell, uh, Comic-Con, and E3. So we're going to be going through all those things, alright? First topic we're going to be talking about is PS5, right? We all know PS5 is coming out. We all uh, know how it looks. I love how it looks. Some people think it's a little abstract. It looks like an alien spaceship. But regardless of the fact, they're going... Like, some tidbits kind of uh, leaked out that there may be some customization with the PS5 as far as the face plate or the side plates, those little things, the white part of the PS5, yes, those might be able to come off, you might be able to get customized different colors and shapes, sort of like when they had the Xbox 360, how you could get the face plates all different customized, all different kinds with that, I think they might be doing the same thing with this X, with this PlayStation 5, which would definitely be great for them, because with the Xbox Series X, it looks like this big black brick or refrigerator or whatever, but because of the way the unique design of the PS5, having being being able to like say buy or maybe 3D print or like maybe get one of those like sticker faceplates. So if they lean into this, they can make so much more revenue just with the customization of this new console. Because I think that like I think they're thinking smart. Because if this is real, I'm definitely probably gonna get like a customized one of whatever. Like if I want one of anime or like a, you know like solo leveling manga, I think that'll be great. So that's my thought on that and let me know what you think if, if you're down for the ps5 m more now because of this right next call of duty warzone the cheating's been rampant right people have been cheating left and right and uh they they've been trying to crack down on the cheating but you know it's, it's kind of hard but now they're they're making it a lot more hard because they're like yo if you using any type of mods as far as like you know to customize uh, like during the matches or anything like that they're gonna ban you and they're gonna try they're, they're, they're gonna look to people you know calling you out snitching on you in case you know so banning you and that's gonna be great because I think what they should probably do is they should have a server for cheaters in general if you want to cheat go to there just stay on that and then if you don't if you go into this server then okay yeah don't ban them whatever so you know to kind of cater towards both because cheaters are always gonna keep trying to cheat they're gonna get different names, different servers. Like they know how to get the VPN and keep going all different places. So I think you can block them, but if you want to kind of lean into it, go to a, have a different server so that people can run wild and do whatever float. Because that's I think that's how it is with the Grand Theft Auto right now. There's people doing all crazy things in there, and they're not cracking down on them like that, right? So that's that. Next topic, uh, Gabe Newell. Gabe Newell was in um, New Zealand, I believe. That's where he's been staying for the most part. And he's been throwing these big parties to thank them or whatever for him staying. But uh, Gabe Newell, he's pretty much the CEO of Valve. Valve made games like Half-Life and they, they have the Steam. And he was in an interview where they asked him, oh, uh, which which um, which console would you go for? Uh, you know, if you, if you had, he was like, Xbox, the new Xbox. And then they were like, why? Like, because it's better that's his answer no no in-depth as far as uh, the reasons why it's like because it's better and most people the internet blew up I think it's mostly because he deals more with Xbox I mean he deals more with Microsoft in general Microsoft's with PCs his deal is PCs and uh, if you're going off of say just the uh, specs because Xbox is down because they have the 12 teraflops right and then PlayStation 5's got what 10.3 teraflops and PlayStation 5 with their SSD system makes it so there's no loading system. There's no loading at all. Like it's like real quick. But with Xbox, because of like uh, their specs, they're just making it so you can run at 120 frames per second. Now that may be all good and dandy. Some people like that. I kind of like it. But most people, you know, they're good with the constant 60. If if PlayStation, the PlayStation 5 better have a constant 60. It's 60 FPS per second. Like people are gonna be happy. They're gonna be good. At 120, you're going. It's like super realistic, and some people just visually they can't handle that. And with a bunch of different games, that might you know I don't know how people might take it, but they might throw up or I don't know. But regardless of the fact, I think that um, to me the PlayStation still has a better aesthetic to me because they're trying to evolve and go different things. It isn't just the specs. 
it's the technology that they're going for like with the controller alone and sure the playstation has been known to put these little things on the controllers like how, how you can say like gimmicks some people would think they were gimmicks but most of their first party will use these like say the swipes on the stuff and third party won't even bother it they'll just make a game but most of the time they do that because they're making games for all the consoles they're making it for the xbox and make it for the playstation sometimes for the switch so they don't implement other functions as far as what the controller itself can do they just focus on a core gameplay which i think would probably be on their best as like you know to add some of the things from the playstation's controllers but with the PlayStation controller, I don't think it's even got to be that intuitive. With the dual sense of shaking, the rumble fact feature, I don't know what coding, if they have to do specific coding for that. I think that would be awesome. But all in all, like they say, they, they if, you're, if you're all about the specs, maybe the Xbox and the online and the gaming pass and all that, they have what they, they, they have something good on their hands. PlayStation, me, I'm a PlayStation fan. I might probably get both of them because the Xbox Series X is definitely look good, backwards compatible. I think I might get both of them, so we'll see how that goes, but that's what that is, right? Next, Battletoads. There's a there was a teaser that that uh, there's gonna be it's gonna be coming to Xbox and Stream in August was August 20th. So look out for that. If you guys remember the old school Battletoads, which is had probably one of the hardest stages ever in video game history with the hover hoverboards, not past that. But I'm telling you, you gotta be on point, like laser eyes, like reaction to, to get past that. But Battletoads is coming back. The the art style looks a little bit different to me. I'm not sure. I might try it out. I'm not sure because it doesn't look like the old school Battletoads. It looks too more big, cartoony, whatever. I don't know. But we'll see. If you're looking forward to that, August 20th, check that out. Next, we've got the Avengers, right? The Avengers game, there is huge. It's an MMO kind of in, in a way. It's like almost, it's like a Destiny, but in a Marvel world. So you're going to be able to play with all these different Marvel characters. And they just introduced Hawkeye. Hawkeye is definitely one of those mainstream Marvel characters. He's, 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 he's very important somewhat in the in the Marvel movies. And he's a very good character. Like they in the comics, they, they've had some good storylines with him. Uh, where he's just some t just protecting just a regular neighborhood with his dog or whatever. So I think he might be a good gameplay. I'm hoping to see more gameplay of new characters. Some people are thinking that Spider-Man from the Spider-Man PlayStation 4 might swoop into this. Who knows? Because, you know, Miles Morales, uh, that, that game that's coming out probably near around the console, if they introduce him in like a DLC, that'll be awesome. So I I'm looking... I'm thinking this might be really great this game I think I might even copy because it, it looks fun it really looks fun so we'll see how that looks and down if anything if you think you're gonna get it if you think it looks cool comment down below all right next topic we're talking about is Jill Valentine you guys remember the original si um, not si what am I talking about it's gamer credit gone <laughs> anyways the um, Resident Evil the original one where they had the live-action people play the whole intro in the beginning before you go into the game and it's like you know like the pixelated characters well they've people have been able to find all the other characters that were in this live-action kind of intro except for Jill Valentine they found Jill Valentine and there's gonna they're gonna probably have a um a, a question or their interview with her about pretty much Resident Evil and I think I'd be kind of interested in what she thinks like if she's a gamer if she because she was like a teenager when she did this so let's see i don't know maybe she's into games now i don't know but i think it might be interesting to check it out right all right next uh splinter cell splinter cell everybody's been waiting for a splinter cell game to come out well too bad you're gonna be waiting a little bit more because they're doing an animated series instead of a, a video game and it's gonna be uh written by the writers of the John Wick, yeah, John Wick. Um, it's gonna be on Netflix animated series, and Netflix is pretty good with these animated series, like like say Castlevania. That was really br good and awesome. So we'll see how that looks. But they're gonna be doing Splinter Cell with the writer um, of John Wick, uh, Derek uh, Costa. Uh, they're gonna have, I think, two seasons from what I'm hearing, and we'll see if it's good. I don't know exactly when. Just not that much more info about that, but we'll see how it comes out and. We'll check it out when it comes out. Definitely, because John Wick, the writers that give John Wick, one, awesome. Two, mm, three, badass. So, <laughs> if you guys feel the same way, let me know down below. All right, uh, next, the two major events, right? Comic-Con uh, Comic Con at home. Comic-Con at home turned out to be a flop. Um, with Variety, they, they put out that the tweets were down 95% 
on the Comic Con. So the, the compared to last year, people tweeted about Comic Con at home 95% less. And then on top of that, if you're going off of specs, or whatever, right? That was down 95% from uh, say from this time it was 93,681 as opposed to last year it was at 1,719,000 right and then as far as the tweets about the top TV events it, it was down 93% the tweets of the top five movie panels was down 99% so people are not giving a F about the, the Comic Con at home now I personally I didn't watch all because it was a lot of hours it was a lot of hours and it, it, it was more difficult because it seemed like they were cramming so much more in than they normally do because I used to watch G4 or whichever when they, when they cover the Comic-Con they would have you know certain things they have the panels with this one they had all the panels on this thing which it'd be cool um, I think down the road what they should do probably have like a, a, a paying service so if you go to the Comic-Con, you know, you pay for your pass and 15 bucks, you can go at and then, you know, see everything after like, cause you can't get to all these panels. Or if you're online, you can't see it, you know, like if you can't go to Comic-Con, you know, pay like maybe 15 bucks and you can see all these panels. But I personally would like it for free, but if they want to make extra money, maybe charge maybe 10 bucks or whatever, and we'll see. Uh, for the for like the exclusive panels, you know, like the ones that everybody else had to be waiting in line for or whatever, but I think that might be kind of a, a way around this, but apparently you can't just do it online because people ain't watching, people ain't tweeting, and uh, we'll see how that works out. Uh, E3, E3 turned out to be a flop, and it might be gone for good because uh, it turned out to be a major bust. Jeff Keighley, he's the one that's pretty much hosted them for the past, what, 20 years or something like that. He kind of bailed out let, uh, this year before the whole Corona thing ended it because he didn't like the way it was going. Like, he didn't like the direction they were going with the C3. And like, he's, if once he goes out, everyone's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, um, so people were wanting, like Sony, they started doing their own kind of events. Uh, uh, Nintendo, they started doing Nintendo Direct. So E3 was kind of losing its steam, especially with this whole online service. Like everything's been going more online and online. And I think that's sort of like, that's kind of what's been happening with Comic-Con as well. Like, you know, like the movie studios, uh, was it Sony or, or Marvel? They kind of stay away because they have their Disney, their Disney. I forget what their Disney 23, D23 or something like that. So both kind of things have been losing uh, their main core of uh, you know, uh, like uh, of of their of, of their quality or the stuff that they have, right? Or the the people that come to it and present their product. Now E3, Blizzard, Sony. Uh, Nintendo Direct, they've already been kind of gone or whatever, but let's see, they, they were going off of the specs with the Twitch, the Twitch views for Sony, the Sony reveal for the PlayStation 5, it was at 1.5 million views, right? As opposed to the Xbox from 9, 2019 to E3 was only, uh, it was like 0.94 million, right? So they were less than a million for the uh, Xbox. Nintendo Direct was 0.56 million. Uh, and a game awards was at 0.62 million. So Sony on their own kind of built this, but at the same thing, you got to take it with a bit of caveat because Sony held back on all information until the last minute when Xbox was, you know, putting this stuff, and then it was just like BAM! And then you got the PlayStation 5, how it looks, and everything, and people were just like, you know? So I think you could say that. They're, just, they're seeing or realizing that they don't really need E3 because E3 is mostly for the independent. Independent people, like independent developers, they want to go to E3 so people can see their games and touch their games and play their games. And that's what a lot of E3 is. Like that, you bring your games there, people can try it out, see, and they see if they want to play. Like if you see an online store, people get interested, but it's still it's a word of mouth that people touching it. But that's why what they've been doing now is they they have these uh kind of servers where. You can go on and then like put kind of like when you ask them for uh, IT help and they take over control of your computer. Well, they do that for gamers. So gamers get to take over control of a, a computer far off somewhere else and try out these games so that they can give their opinions on how it is. So it isn't just a regular Joe Schmo or people that can go to E3 that get to touch this game. It's mostly like the the, the YouTubers and the, um you know the the people that can have a that have a say the people that have uh, followers that want to try our games or viewers these are the only people that really get to touch or play these games and tell what they think and developers or the, the you know the 
companies are seeing that they might need not need E3 anymore. So we'll see how that turns out. And that is all the topics. Thank you for like this is all in one shot. I'm trying to do this. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to keep the editing to a minimum because, like I said, I've got a bunch of other things I'm doing. It's late at night. It's like 11 something. What is it? Like 12, 20 something, right? I I, I gotta get some sleep. So I'm gonna try to edit this, put this out. Thank you guys for watching this thing. Comment down below. Tell me what you guys think about any of the topics that I talked about today. And remember, I'm Wes Grant. You've been watching Suburban Nerd, and you've just been notified. Catch you guys on the next Daily Nerd News.